The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. In a previous demonstration on two-beam interference, we saw that the fringe pattern was a series of vertical lines. The reason was that two, the two beams were plane waves, and the lines were due to the interference of two plane waves with a slight angle between them. In this demonstration, we're going to show that you can get all kinds of shapes in the fringe pattern by simply placing a lens in the setup. And here is the setup. As you may recall, here's the laser. Here's the beam from the laser being reflected by this mirror. And here we're going to add a lens. The light coming out of the lens, and reflected by this mirror here, will have some curvature now. And when it enters the Michelson interferometer here, the, the beam going to this arm, being the longer arm, slightly longer arm, will have slightly different curvature when it interferes with the beam coming from this arm, because the path length here is shorter than this one. The two beams will interfere and pass along this direction. Then, being, then they will get reflected at this mirror through the lens and then onto the screen. So now, if we take a close-up at the, at the fringe pattern, we will see that we have circular fringes. And what's interesting about the circular fringes is that the spacing between the fringes can be changed by disturbing the setup. For example, if I change the length of, of, the, of this arm here, I can change the spacing between, between the fringes, because I'm getting closer and closer to the same curvature as in the, as in the other arm. If I go further, again, we can see that I can increase the number of fringes, showing that the, again, the curvature has changed relative to this fixed arm over here. Now, I'm going to show the effect of misalignment on the, on the circular fringes. If I adjust this mirror to here, and then let's again look at the fringes, and then you can see that by misaligning this mirror, I can get arcs instead of, instead of the bullseye. And in fact, if, I'm, if I look closely at the arcs, I can tell which way the beams are, are misaligned. All right. Now what I'll try and do is to try and make the field go all dark or all bright by making the two paths as identical as possible. Now you can see I only have about a couple of fringes in the interference pattern. They're slightly misaligned. So now I have them whoop, a little bit better centered. So now let me close in one path and then see if I can get complete darkness or complete brightness. So let me adjust the alignment as I move in. Here you can see I'm getting close to equal path. And then a little bit more. Not quite. That's almost, we're almost, we're almost there. You can see if I press on the table, you can see the screen going bright and dark. Now I think I have a little bit to go. And maybe we can get complete 
extinction. Let's see, this is, see, pre it's pretty, yeah, pretty close to a complete, a complete extinction. So, in this brief demonstration then, we've shown that you can get circular fringes, bullseye, arcs, and what have you by simply making the input beam to the interferometer have some curvature. And by adjusting the path length difference between the two arms, you can get a variety of fringe systems. 